Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar session recap, as always, on Monday. Today is 13th of March, 2017. As always, my name is Nanad, and we will see actually five different setups. Today, not four, but actually five, Euro, dollar, pound, dollar, Australian dollar, Euro, yen, and dollar, CAD. So, as always, guys, uh, I hope that you enjoy the previous uh, session recap and live trading. Uh, we are having that uh, each Monday and uh, Wednesday on Admiral Markets, so you should be able to join and enjoy free analysis and free pips. And uh, as you know, guys, from time to time, uh, we have a great uh, session recap, of course, not good, but great, and previous session recap uh, of 6th of March was one of the best, really, it was a great one. We had a lot of good setups that have been providing us with, with a lot of pips and I will show you today what happened also and we'll give you new setups. Before we begin, standard risk disclaimer, explain that online education materials are available by Admiral Markets and Sony for a global audience and have in mind that this information is not suitable for everyone, so this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. The risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with Forex market by accepting the risk, you're also proceeding further with me. Okay, this is me and okay, past week results, 6th of March 2017, Euro dollar uh, alternative trade was good for 30 pips, breakout trade was good for another 30 pips. Pound dollar scalp swing trade went into a loss of 25 pips. Australian dollar positional trade was good for 125 possible pips. Euro yen positional trade was possibly good for 135 pips. And dollar CAD was good for 110 pips. Total pips pool for the previous session recap was 415 and the trade of the week was, well, Euro yen. I might say it was Euro yen simply because I, I was thinking about uh, Australian dollar but well, Euro Yen was a little bit better, I need to say, just because, well, it almost had no drawdown and it provided even more than 135 pips. But well, you will see what actually happened. And thank you guys for such great comments. Uh, really, uh, Dillian is saying, hi, Nana, I'm so happy to hear you again. Can wait to hear what you will tell us today. Of course, I'm here. And uh, you will uh, trade this along with me, of course, uh, Monday, Wednesday, session recap, and each day you will see new analysis. So, as always, guys, I'm very glad that you are enjoying it. It makes me really happy. So, rules and setups before I show you previous week results. Give price a breathing room. Okay, enter within 15 pips of the predicted level if it's agreement with your system. I call it POC or buffer zone. Uh, don't forget that uh, I personally also trade this setup, so this is what I do, what I trade. So you can actually trade a straddle along if you want, and well, if you agree with my setups, just go for it. Of course, keep the risk under control. Add the spread to your stop loss even if you trade by ECN, add 2 to 5 pips spread depending on the pair traded. We take one position per listed pair. It's either position or alternative trade, whichever hits first. Don't forget that first touch of the zone is the most profitable. That's why we need to focus on the first touch. Positional trades are trend trades. Alternative trades are counter trend trades. Breakout trades and scalp trade levels can be traded independently of any position. So if you see that, let's say, count that positional or counter trade trade is in, is in play, you can also trade breakout setup. Depending on time and volatility, well, the minimum amount of pips that we we want to see is 20 pips. So that is why I, well, I propose that you can use profit stop after 20 pips, not less. You can use less than 20 pips only if you see that the market will not change and that will actually might turn against you. So you want to protect your profits. So guys, always try to protect your profits. You see, sometimes the market can be very nasty. For example, on Friday, uh, well, you saw my setup. I was sure that Euro dollar will fall uh, after a spike. The spike happened. It didn't drop on Friday, but rather it dropped today, even below POC today. And a lot of people ask me, okay, Nenad, why did you give us a short setup 
when euro dollar went up because guys I was trading it short and I still have my position in euro dollar short I don't know I might uh, keep it yet uh, I don't care really I want to see a little bit more pips I will show you but if you if you actually followed my NFP pre NFP analysis you know that I was short about euro dollar about 1.0670 okay so once more guys well uh, you definitely need to respect what market is giving you <laughs> well sometimes it will go a little bit higher or lower than we actually predicted but you know guys general trend is to the downside or you know you need to see the the overall the whole picture okay and of course guys the final thing is uh, pips pool is the maximum available number of pips you could have cut on recap entries okay let's see previous week euro dollar this is session recap now euro dollar 6th of march 17 uh, 17 pm or 7 pm it was uh, platform time when our webinar starts i told you to sell around 0.680 to buy around 0.550 what happened we got into a buy trade at this point here you see we trade the first touch so this was the first touch maximum available number of pips was 30 pips here so you could have made 15 20 pips let's say if you saw that market is turning from you you could have protected it and make something out of this alternative buy setup but then guys we had a sell breakout and exactly when 0550 was broken I, I said that you can sell and you could have made nice 30 pips to the downside okay so that happened after our setup Gerhard is saying, uh, or Gerard, he's saying that he's also short on euro dollar. Well, uh, to be honest, I'm also short. I, I really don't care about NFP spike because, you know, guys, you need to remember something. Forget about what other others have told you. I will tell you the truth. Friday is a profit-taking day. And Friday is not that good for trading. You need to know now. You need to know that for now and forever, okay? Friday is very nasty. Friday is literally, literally can give you, can, can spike you out and yet on Monday the price will return on your trading levels or trading levels that you actually originally sought on Friday. Friday is always like that, especially NFP Friday. Why? Because NFP is high risk news and big investors start to take profits. We had a profit taking on euro on dollar on Friday. That is why euro dollar went up. When dollar when when you see a profit taking on dollar, dollar basket usually goes up where dollar is actually quoted currency. Okay? So investors are actually dumping dollars. They're, they're releasing their, their uh, long positions on dollars and other pairs simply use the leverage of covering and they start to move in the opposite way. That happened with euro dollar. Euro dollar was and still is in a short trend. And on Friday, euro dollar spiked because of dollar profit taking. Okay, but today you see it dropped again towards our POC zone. So, guys, Friday is the worst trading day for traders who want to actively trade it. My advice is if you want to trade Friday, well, as soon as you're in profit, protect your profits. And when you make profit, just step away from your PC because Friday does not respect technical analysis to the fullest extent because investors don't want to risk anything over the weekend and they close their trades on Friday that causes always profit taking that turns the price contrary to technical analysis so if you're advanced trader you should know that if you're expert trader you already know that but if you are a beginner trader just trade small position if you want to trade on Friday and if you make profits just step away guys 
pound dollar previous week, we had scalp swing. We had two sell positions that unfortunately didn't realize because market was didn't market wasn't giving us any any possible opportunity to short into pound dollar here on POC one, POC two. Well, you see what happened. Just it it, it just continued to go down and down, and then I said we can try to scalp swing 2205, but actually you see 2205 provided us for some small amount of pips and then it dropped. Well, here, this was the only spike it made. Maybe it was good for 15 pips, but guys, this was, well, this was a stop loss for me. Australian dollar was a great one. The price went two or three pips shy from positional sell. But guys, really, I said 76.50, price went to 76.32, 33, and then you see it started to drop. So you, you might have joined a little bit later and still experience some of, of this great fall that happened on the Australian dollar. Now, do you remember when I said that, I, I think I said it on live trading on Wednesday, when I said Australian dollar is short on rallies, guys, Australian dollar is short on rallies, I will repeat again. That is how I see Australian dollar now, and that is why I favor short Australian dollar positions. Okay? And this is what happened. It really went in a as a in in a in a in a nice downtrend channel. I mean this is a straight drop from this. I cannot count this as any retracement. This is a direct drop here from this spot when this trend line broke it drop directly, making some sort of, uh, well, we can call it a hook at the bottom, because this is a hook pattern here. You can see W also shaping, shaped up here. Now the price is trying to reach a little bit higher maybe and then drop. I will sell on rallies. What can I say? I will sell on rallies, definitely. I mean, Australian dollar for me is still sell on rallies. Euro yen, excellent setup for from the previous week. We had a positional trade around 190.85. The price went to POC 120, 001. Here you see what happened straight from this. Well, this was a double bottom here, so straight here. It went heavily to the upside. So Euro yen was again one of the best trades. Maybe, and I think this was the best trade for the previous week. One of my favorites, I didn't personally manage to grab all the profits there, but I also enjoyed a nice ride towards this region and then I made a profit stop. So I was stopped here for a profit. Maybe some of you made more than me, but well, still guys, the overall result is that we should be in profit and we should be always happy when we are in profit. We should not grieve about taking less profits because, you know, guys, market is here. It doesn't go anywhere. Don't be greedy. Just be patient and wait for the setup to come to you, okay? Always, guys, okay? And finally, dollar CAD. Dollar CAD is and was in uptrend. It still is in uptrend. I prepared new setup for you. Well, uh, for the previous week, we had a buy position. Buy position was not reached because the price went to 33.82. It should have been like 33.65.6, so we could have bought it. But what happened is it went to 33.50. Then, well, what happened? <laughs> it just spiked to the upside. But then again, guys, well, our alternative sell trade come into play, came into play around 35.35. Okay, straight 15 pips in the zone. So this was the zone. And guys, there it dropped. So if you ask what a zone is, guys, so if I say 35.50, the zone is, I need to explain. So if you see, no matter what, which level. Let's let's use this example. One thirty-five fifty. So your levels to sell are one thirty-five thirty-five, one thirty-five fifty, and one thirty-five. Okay, sixty-five. Well, add something if it cannot it be reached. Like you can add a few pips here and there. Sometimes it can happen that you miss set up for a few pips, but then again, uh, you should know that uh, definitely, definitely, uh, well, the, the, I mean, you, you can enter 
go with low risk, then scale in. If you see that the price is entering the zone, you can scale in. And actually, you just need to keep stop loss the same, guys. Don't move your stop loss. Just keep it the same. And then you can scale in. Effectively, it can bring your profits exponentially up. I already explained it on webinars. Uh, Diliana is saying uh, that uh, she, her last two Fridays were bad for her. Diliana, well, just simply stay away from Friday if you're not sure what to do. I presume that you're a new trader and it's good to just watch what happens on Friday. Angel Angel is saying the best, Nana. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. No problem, of course. <clears throat> okay, here and uh, let me see what I wanted to say is, yeah, that uh, you can use you can use uh, this okay as a well as a media median point to enter the market but 35 33 15 uh, sorry 33 35 33 65 33 50 that is the POC zone okay 15 pips here and there just keep this this stop loss the same this is important guys okay this figure is always important okay uh, now I will show you this week's setups and I will just answer answer one uh, one question and then I will show you this week's setup. Uh, do you scale in but entering new positions with bigger lot size? No. If my risk is let's say 2% per trade, I can open my first position with 1%, then I can add 0 0.3, 0 0.3 or I can add 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and so on. Okay? Just don't don't uh, raise your risk, guys. You can you can scale in and keep the risk in control. Okay. Uh, Mondays, guys, also can be. And Anthony saying that Mondays are also hard for him. Mondays are not great days. Best days are usually usually Tuesday, Wednesday, for, uh, Thursday. Mondays are okay, but price simply cannot, can range from time to time. For example, guys, today th there is a heavy range on, uh, on price. So, you know, if you see that market is not going anywhere, just leave your trade running. If you keep your risk under control, it will either hit your stop loss or it will give you profits. If it doesn't hit your stop loss, just protect your trade. If it hits your stop loss, don't be disappointed. It's only a small part. You will make it up. Just, you know, if you don't like Mondays. For example, today, Monday has been very slow. You know, I was, I'm like 10 pips in profit with Euro dollars. So what, what I should do? I will leave it. I mean, you know, what I can say is you just need to relax, guys. Try to relax. This is a great business, great job. You need to be relaxed. I know you can gamble. You you want to make money fast, but please listen to me. Trade as big banks do. Try to raise your risk only if you want to risk your profits, not your equity. Jan is saying Swissy was very nice in the morning. Yes, of course, because uh, Euro dollar is dropping, then dollar Swissy is going up. I mean, it's always like that. <laughs> Eggles is saying Boris is wonderful. He can trade Mondays, Fridays, work only three days per week. Well, guys, you can do whatever you want. Just you, you, you just need to follow the rhythm of the market. So you can work one day, you can work each day. You can, you know, just follow the rhythm. Follow these setups, and you should be really, you should be well. Stand strong, okay, and uh, try to uh, visit not just webinars, but also the analysis. So Euro dollar is in downtrend, but ranging. So I'm still in this position, guys. I haven't changed my opinion uh, after NFP. I mean, I will see what will happen. Uh, I might take the half of my trade now and leave the half running, not putting it to break even because it's very close to break even. But yeah, I, I mean, uh, you probably saw my analysis on Friday. Uh, it was NFP, pre-NFP analysis. It was very clear. I really expected good numbers on NFP primary because ADP was uh, much better than expected. And yeah, ADP is usually giving you, uh, let's say, uh, it can predict NFP result. 
usually and uh, here if you if you watch it here this was result NFP preview and I said fade could happen here what happened actually the price spiked to this POC zone but then it pro it actually went a little bit higher and today it started to drop 0720 which is a strong resistance hasn't been met so what I will do I will take the half of my trade and leave the rest uh, run so running so really minimum risk on this uh, we will see what will happen but this is guys uh, just a continuation from Friday here and now what can tell what can I tell you if this happens okay 0750 I will make this mid-term trade okay with 100 pip stop loss and we look at TP 1.0350 because if this is hit and stop loss is not hit I think that euro dollar will go down heavily usually when when you have a strong trend retracement can be even bigger and it can fool you out to think that the trend is is diminishing but usually what happens is the move is stronger so this is primary position that was carried away okay over the weekend okay and this is well if you haven't traded it I can say I'm still in a position I just took the half out and I'm still riding it and this is what I want to see if this is if this happens guys please try to put your stop loss at maximum 1 to 1.5 percent of risk okay don't gamble with this okay you put high risk only if scalping this is not scalping this is intraday position or intraweek so go with 1 to 1.5 percent of risk okay yes Tibor, you can actually enter now, but keep the risk under control. As I said, I'm still I still keep my shorts, although I took the half out. And I mean, guys, everything is the same as it was on Friday. As I say, I, I didn't change anything really here. This was this is euro dollar. I mean on Friday it spiked really heavily to the upside okay and here guys let me remove these lines today price is ranging it's not that great but you see the overall picture is still short on euro dollar okay so what we might expect is probably a new sell if we have a stop loss hit I will sell it again here around 0, 0750 a lot of rejections here actually this was head and shoulders here you see head and shoulders big head and shoulders maybe we can call this uh, a rooftop because when head and shoulders happens at important resistance we might see a rooftop and this looks like a rooftop here you can also place Fibonacci from this spot to this spot and you can see it's very close to 78.6 so this is important level for me also a little bit lower we have two order blocks so euro dollar is still short okay uh, I will answer Yavor your questions just a little bit later pound dollar still seeing a sell around 2300 with stop loss around 2330 okay TP around 2220 TP2 around 2180 alternative buy around 2160 stop loss around 2125 TP around 2300 so here let me show you the screen I will be looking for a sell guys I will open now uh, weekly 
here here guys you can see 2346 is here so we definitely if it's resistance where I say it is around 23 it is you can see it here just watch confluence here previous order block okay it's not that high but still this is breakout retest continuation and if you add Fibonacci tool from the previous swing towards this region you will get a perfect confluence with 50 retracement add EMA 89 add H5 weekly Camarilla order block above it okay so well I can say that this is resistance if it happens here my stop loss is slightly higher than H5 so 23.00 sell, 23.30 stop, 22.20 TP, 21.80 TP2. Buy trade around 21.60, then we need to zoom into lower time frame. 21.60 could be a possible buy trade, simply because if it happens here, guys, it might be some sort of bullish inverted head and shoulders, although it's a little bit strange because we have an M here. But we could see something like this, some form of inverted Batman pattern. If you don't know what Batman is, Batman is a sort of pattern that we traders use uh, in our trading when you see inverted head and shoulders with cloak. This looks like a bat cloak, you see? We call it a Batman. So you won't be finding Batman pattern occasionally, you won't be finding it on the internet because it's not officially uh, recognized pattern but you know guys traders such as well me and other traders who who actually grew up on Forex Factory and other uh, websites we use the term uh, Batman pattern so this is b possible Batman if it gets here towards this level here okay you have guys really I need to say that you're very lucky to have me here because I am also a trader, not just analyst. And you know that an analysis is trading is a little bit different. So sometimes you won't be hearing, you will be hearing something that is maybe not used in the world of technical analysis, but it's used in the world of trading. That is like Batman pattern, uh, X crosses that I also developed the, the, the term for the analysis. Maybe you will you will hear uh, for a pattern one two one uh, one two one. You won't be hearing, as I say, that occasionally during the analysis. But this is what I mix: technical trading and technical analysis. Australian dollar is in downtrend. Uh, sell position here, breakout below, scalp swing by. Definitely very very well. Ah, there is no position sell. How come? Ah, TP, okay. Yes, I forgot to put TP. Well, guys, TP for positional sell is this. This is TP1, this is TP2. So, TP1 is 75.45, TP2 is 74.80. So, that is, uh, I mean, you can go with this. So, TP1 is this for positional sell, TP2 is this. And of course, breakout. So if it breaks below 75.45, you can open another position. I have pending order here. Scalp swing by around 74.50. Okay, and here is the Australian dollar chart. So 76.00 positional sell. Okay, 76.00 positional sell. Okay, guys, it's already happening. So you might, you see it you might start to think about selling stop loss is 76.40 so it's like 40 pips here and you see guys this is still a little bit I can say I will use it's overbought at this point so this is a POC zone here You see it's 78.6, 8 yard top, previous sellers, historical sellers here, and 
I think it could reject from here. Okay, and if it breaks below 75.45, we can add breakout right here. Okay. Uh, Derek is asking, is it a potential wolf wave? Okay, let me see. Let's see if it's a wolf wave. I don't see it here, guys. Really, I don't see it here. Uh, The only wolf wave I saw was here. That was confirmed. Also here, here, here. So I don't see wolf wave here. Just a rejection. Okay. So that is Australian dollar. And possible buy around 74.50. But I think we will have a sell trade. I, I will sell this Australian dollar, really. I So 74.85, previous support, probably protected by some buyers. It could be bought from here. But I want really to see primary a sell trade. Very, very close to POC zone. Euro yen looking uh, to buy around 121.75. Stop loss 121.40, TP 122.80, sell around 122.90, stop loss 123.20, TP 122.00. So positional buy around 121.75 euro yen. Okay, I will show you right now you see here it's a mix of previous order block L4 38.2 EMA 89 Mihai uh, T89 is exponential I use exponential moving average in my analysis so this is it POC zone here, if it drops, well, we could see probably a spike from this zone. So let's see what will happen, but this is buy opportunity. And sell might come here again around 122.90. This is now trapped, you see, this is the current momentum and price action is trapped within the triangle, this, within the rectangle. This is the rectangle. So if this rectangle is respected, we might see either rejection or buy from this spot. Rejection comes here, buy spot, buy, uh, buy setup comes here. Okay, uh, I will answer guys all of your questions. I see a lot of questions. Let's let's do it just after I show you slides, and you can ask other questions also. And dollar cad, I will buy dollar cad. 3410, let's see, the price was very close to my, well, uh, very close to POC, guys. Uh, dollar CAD, 3410, around 3410, 3370 stop loss, 3550 TP, okay, and, 30, and 3600 is TP2. We can sell around 3610, stop loss 3640, TP 3550. Okay. Uh, Angel is saying, can you look for gold? Yes, I will look at it. Dollar Cat uh, Hasselhoff. Is it David Hasselhoff? Famous Mitch Buchanan from Baywatch. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I see the signature uh, Hasselhoff. So, yeah, I, I remember him. Well, a long time ago, even before Baywatch, there was a series named Knight Rider back in 1980s, and he was also starring the series. So just, yeah, I, I was reminded now on that series. 
Okay, dollar cat four hour master candle. You can see it here, four hour master candle. Uh, I will uh, show you the chart. But first, guys, before that, before that, uh, dollar cat. You need to watch 34.10 for a possible buy trade and 33.70 as a stop loss. Okay. And now I will show you the chart, dollar uh, cad, and then I will go with your questions. You see, guys, this is a strong uptrend now on dollar cad, really. But the thing is that dollar cad is actually trying to, you see this candle here. This is massive candle indeed. Even on four hour, you can see it here. I use massive candle breakouts on one hour time frame. But you can also watch it on four hour time frame uh, just for maybe additional confirmation. But I trade it exclusively on one hour. But as I say, you can watch it on four hour too. Because it's valid. It's definitely valid. I don't use, I don't recommend using anything than one or four hour time frame for Master Candle. So guys, you can see it here, even on four hour time frame, it is trying to go up, to go down. But then, well, if you zoom into one hour time frame, you see it's very close to POC zone, okay? POC zone is around this region here. We have rectangle consolidation here that is historical and it might appear in now moment. But then again, we have L5 also, not L5, sorry, L4, okay? And ATR bottom. So this is our potential setup. Now, if this drops below 33, if it goes to 33.50, okay, then it will be probably a stop loss. That is why I, I, I put a little bit higher stop loss, but yet again, you see, it could spike to the upside. And why 36.10 as a sell? Because, guys, 36.10 here, historically, See, 35.60, now if you go back to history, see, I need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, where was it? Now I'm lost with these lines. 36.10, okay. 36, 36.10, in history, it was a strong level in history, guys, okay? Here, you will see it. Let me see a lot of levels now printed out. I will leave just this now moment lines. You see 3610 here. This is double top, previous double top. Here and there on weekly. So it should provide resistance. On four hour time frame, it has a confluence with previous. Zero, zero resistance here. So this is where I would sell. Okay? And this is, as I say, where I can buy it. So let's see if we, what uh, trade setup we will first have. But I think we might see, actually, uh, some nice long trade opportunity from uh, the spot that I show you. Now we can go with questions, of course. Is this for our uh, master candle? Of course, this is for our master candle. Uh, uh, Derek is saying Australian dollar for wool wave. I need to check it. Okay, I need to check it. Derek, uh, Jan, what is the difference between Camarilla MACD, MACD Cam, or an all color MACD from London? Uh, I re, uh, MACD Cam is a slight variation of all color MACD because uh, as you if you if you watched what I did I actually just switch colors and change histograms to suit Camarilla MACD method so indeed this is the indicator you might use other two line MACD there are a lot of two line color MACD indicators but don't be confused Jan Camarilla MACD is not the indicator I, this is MACD indicator, 
and Camarilla MACD is a method. So don't be confused. Uh, next question. Can you tell me at what time does the master candle trade become invalid? Uh, if you watched my master candle webinar, you need to have four candles that confirm master candle and the first, the second and the third candle need to break either high or low by master candle. That is when breakout setup is valid. Exactly, Navi. Next three must break. But then, it, fourth candle, if it breaks, it's not valid anymore. It doesn't necessarily mean that the trade will not go in profits, but it's not valid breakout. So master candle breakout is valid. Three candles, next three, one of them must break after the master candle has been confirmed. If you're still not sure, please watch webinar. Okay, next question. Uh, can you tell me, Nenad, your email? I mean, yes, of course. My email is tarantulafx at gmail.com. Easy. I will... Uh, I will write it down. Okay. Uh, uh, next question, gold. Okay, gold, 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 gold. We will remove. Okay. So gold, guys, now I will go with four hour time frame. Gold is bearish here. Uh, the price might reject again from H3 because this is strong. I see this is strong zone. I guess there is Fibonacci number there. Exactly. Okay, very clear, guys, for gold. Watch 1215.66. Angel, I think this, this also answers your question. This is where I would be looking for short opportunities on gold, should this point is reached. A lot of confluence here. H3, order block, 50 retracement, ATR top, and you will have EMA 89 around 61.8. So this is the level to short into, in my opinion. Okay? So gold, watch it. Silver, again, same, very similar setup. Order block, historical re rejections, now uh, historical sellers, probably now moment sellers here. And let's see, we have Fibonacci, but probably, yeah, 38.2 here. ATR top, so this could be level 2 short into this zone here. 17.24, 17.33. I think it could drop from there. Uh, Dillion, of course, uh, dollar yen, I will show you dollar yen. Uh, Andy, then do you use trailing stops for profit stop? Do you adjust them manually? I I am maybe a little bit old school in that sense, so I adjust adjust it manually. I like to have a full control over my account, and that is why I do it manually. I guess there are also some good expert advisors, but definitely, yes. I mean that is the answer. I I do it manually. Uh, Christian, dollar cat, good moment for buy. I missed first minutes for webinar. Christian, yes, I mean, but you need to respect the stop loss. So if you buy dollar cat now, go with lower risk, then add. Maximum risk I recommend is 1.5%. So add a little bit more if it starts to drop. Keep stop loss the same. Stop loss for dollar cat long is 35.50 plus spread. Okay? Angel. Again, your comments are very, very appreciated indeed. 
He's saying, thank you, Nenad, you're the best. And really, I'm not saying this just like this for me. You're really the best teacher for trading. Thanks for everything. Yes, guys, thanks. Thank you, indeed. As I say, th these kind of comments really makes me happy and, well, even more passionate to give you the best possible setups. I really don't want you to lose, guys. I want you to make money in Forex trading. Uh, Sin is asking, uh, what broker time should be used on 4-hour and daily? Well, uh, I trade with Admiral Markets, and broker time is, Admiral Markets time is, uh, in course, it is actually, uh, at this point, it's uh, GMT plus 2. At the end of March, it will be GMT plus 3. And it actually corresponds to uh, New York close time. So let's say now it's GMT plus 2. And at the end of March, when clocks will be adjusted, it will be GMT plus 3. Uh, Javor is asking, what percentage of risk do you suggest, Nenad? And what do you think about 2 to 3 risk per trade? Javor, it's, it can be dangerous if you take five setups with 3% of risk. Then you will be risking 15% in a single day. I mean, it's a little bit of gambling, if you understand what I mean. I'm not, I cannot stop you from doing that. But in the long run, I don't think it will be substantial. Keep your risk low, make profits, and then, guys, if you want to risk, go with really best possible setup and risk only your profits. That is how you can exponentially adjust your risk. Risking your profits, not your equity. Uh, Naivin is, is saying clocks are adjusted. Yes, Naivin, in US, clocks are indeed adjusted, but Europe usually goes two weeks after the US. So in U Europe, clocks will be adjusted in two weeks. And I know, Naivin, that you're trading from US, and you actually adjusted your clock, uh, I think, today or yesterday. So in two weeks, yeah, yesterday. So yes, in two weeks, European time will also be adjusted. Uh, US is always ahead two weeks, approximately through two weeks in, in clock adjustments. That is, then I will, uh, my time zone will be GMT pl plus two, London will be GMT plus one, uh, platform will be GMT plus three. Okay? Uh, and uh, dollar yen, guys. Yes, I, I'm, I'm still keeping this screen, dollar yen. I will show you. Dollar yen is a little bit weird. I still think it could drop before next buy, so I'm not buying this now. Uh, uh, Jian Wenlin, probably from China, he's saying, this is the first time I joined the webinar. I see the session is recorded. May I know where can I view the recording? Of course, Jian, you will be able to see the recording on Admiral Markets YouTube. Well, all of my webinars have been recorded. So just navigate. I will show you where you can go to. OK. Uh, here, on Admiral Markets YouTube channel, you will see uh, a lot of uh, videos. You will see my price section trading school, all of other setups, including live trading. Everything is clear, okay, and uh, it will be uploaded tomorrow, so you will be seeing it here, uploads. But yet again, you can browse the channel so you can find it easily. Okay, dollar yen now. Dollar yen, guys, I think it, it is bought on dips, definitely. I mean, you know, guys, that I'm very, very bullish on dollar yen. But now at this point, guys, this is head and shoulders here, mini head and shoulders, you see? Uh, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I cannot buy now. Although, uh, buying dollar yen probably means that euro dollar will go up, and selling dollar yen means that dollar yen, that euro dollar will go. Uh, sorry, guys. If we buy dollar yen, it means that euro dollar probably will go down, and if we sell dollar yen, euro dollar should go up uh, because the correlation is inverse. But what I'm I really I'm not sure because of this head and shoulders. So what I would say is I would wait, rather wait for a trade setup to develop and go with, uh, with more of retracement. Now, if you take a Fibonacci retracement from past to present, of course, as always, from left to right, okay? Now, let me remove, what is this now? Some of the old Fibonacci retracements, yeah. 
okay where is where is this coming from let me see I want to see clear chart without FIBO a lot of FIBOs here okay this one I removed then we go to one hour time frame and watch this Fibonacci retracement from past to present to give you the future outcome I cannot clearly pinpoint where we might see now moment buy on dollar yen except guys for the setup that I gave you in previous live uh, session I'm still keeping this setup 113.50 buy okay so I'm still keeping this setup but for now moment there is no clear POC zone okay so this is what I think it should drop really it should drop even more uh, Petkov Presian is saying uh, euro dollar is eight people away uh, I'm still keeping my euro dollar short from Friday. I exited half of position and I'm still in a trade. So you can leave it if you want, but have in mind that I already took half from my Friday trade. So yes, definitely you, you might be able to try to trade it, but you need to go with low risk because it already dropped. It, it came close to stop loss, but it didn't hit 70, 720. So I'm still in, but well, as I say, I took half out. For dollar yen, I would like to sit more down. And guys, this lo looks like potential head and shoulders, left head, right, or this could be left shoulder. This is then he leaned head and shoulders, and if it breaks this trend line, it should proceed more to the downside. Uh, uh -huh. for Australian dollar breakout, what is the stop loss? Naveen is asking. Stop loss for Australian dollar breakout is uh, above, uh, let me see, above last high. Okay? I need to edit. So above last high, last one, let me write it like this. Last, so above last one hour high for breakout. That is where you put where you should put your stop loss and the last question Derek can you look at Australian dollar potential wolf wave but I didn't see any wolf wave here really an Australian dollar let me see if I can find something guys give me a few seconds Aha, uh -huh. wave one bottom on 0540. Let me see now. I will manually chart it. Okay, this is for. Okay, now uh, wave one 0540. One hour time frame, okay? 0540. Are you referring to one hour time frame, Derek? Wave 2, 0, 630. 0, 630. It's not one hour time frame, or it is. Uh, wave, okay, this is what we will connect. Wave 3, 0, 490. Okay. Wave four now on are we on wave four? Ah yes. Now if you take a look at this, it is if, if this is one, two, three, this might be a four indeed. But if you want to trade, you need to go with the breakout of one to three trend line. Derek. So one to three trend line is broken only below this level here. You see? One, two, three, four. One, two, three trend line is here. If it breaks this trend line, that is breakout trade opportunity. And on Australian dollar, uh, you see, it's exactly around 7540. 
Yes, so it, it's either here or there. So it might spike or break below. So yes, I might agree with you. Spot on. One, two, three, four, and here. Yeah. But as I say, I prefer to use the indicator for charting because it really saves the time uh, of uh, looking into those waves because those indicators are only there, guys, to help you to identify something. So that is why I use I use indicators just to give me a quick look and then I decide myself. Yes, I will roll the slides. So this is it. Now if we maybe adjust a little bit of the wave Okay, so you see adjustment is here. But definitely, okay, this could be a breakout according both to price analysis and your Wolf Derek. Okay, now slides here. Again, guys, slides. And we can call it a day, Euro dollar. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for comments. Mario, thank you from, for your effort. Uh, Hazelhoff, thanks, Nerad. Appreciate it. You are the man. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ilya, can you roll the slides here? I'm rolling the slides. Uh, Jonat is saying thank you Nana, for intraday trading and T89 no problem I'm glad to help indeed then next comment thank you for all webinars of course we are still running strong and will be running strong I'm not going anywhere anyway uh, I'm not going anywhere guys okay and yeah that was it so guys thank you for listening I will be here with you soon on Wednesday uh, so please don't uh, trade a lot because there will be a Fed rate decision indeed Ilya for this week so definitely don't don't uh, trade too much on Wednesday I will be uh, I will be with you on Wednesday we will try to grab some of the setups and I hope that we will have a profitable week but uh, please Wednesday is Fed announcement so be very careful thanks guys for listening I will be here with you soon cheers and as always trade safe